Hello, and thank you for watching. My name is Rachel Barnett with Gentle Frog. I'm here to create videos for you to help you understand QuickBooks slightly better than you currently do. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please put them in the chat box. Thank you. Hello and welcome. In my last video, I set up QuickBooks Online Ledger. In this video, I want to show you how we're going to navigate it and show you what's different about this than the other QuickBooks Online products. Let's go ahead and open it up. So I'm just going to click on the um, QuickBooks logo on the left. Anytime we set up a new QuickBooks Online file, we have to give it information. So business name, ledger file, industry, we're going to be a consultant. Uh, let's be a marketing consultant. I do not have desktop data. I'm just going to start it from scratch. So I'll select next. What kind of business? I'm going to say I'm a sole proprietor. How do I make money? I provide services. And what do I want to do within QuickBooks? Um, I'm going to pick things that I know are not available in QuickBooks Ledger just to see what happens. Um, so, all right. So it says, welcome to QuickBooks. All right. Thanks. I feel welcomed. I am not going to go through all the pop-ups. I'm sure you'll see them. I'm sure you can go through them yourself. Let's just take a look at things. So in the left-hand side, we have a familiar uh, left-hand navigation bar. That's fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and close this pop-up. So everything here is familiar. Let's just take a look and see what they put in here for our chart of accounts. So I'm going to go to transactions and then chart of accounts. So it's a pretty boring chart of accounts. That's totally fine. We know how to add to the chart of accounts. We'll click on the green. We'll click on the green new. We'll follow the prompts. I have plenty of videos for that. Let's take a look and see what's behind the gear. What's behind door number one? So when we look at the gear, we have account and settings, manage users. Let's go there first. So accounting firms, there's one accounting firm that is me. I can click invite. That tells me I can add another accounting firm, which is great. Over here for users, I have one user. I can upgrade, but I can't add any more. So this tells me that I can have one user and at least two accounting firms. Really, it's one user and two accounting firms. So that part is going to feel a lot like Simple Start. One user, two accountants. Let's go back to the gear. So um, we've got list and recurring list. We don't have products and services here. Um, that's not a surprise to me. That's just a fact. So let's let me pivot. Let me take you to the plus new in the upper left hand corner. When I click on plus new, my list is way smaller than what I might see if I was working with a different product. If you're not familiar with QuickBooks Online, if you're looking at this and saying, well, what's missing? Let me show you. All right, so let's take a look. When I click on plus new in the ledger file, this is what I see. On the right hand side of my screen, I have Craig's design and landscape service. If you Google QuickBooks Online test drive, you'll also get to Craig's design and landscape service. So when I click on plus new, now we can see the differences. So the first difference is that the entire list of customers does not exist in the ledger file. Nothing you see here is in the ledger file. Now, when looking at the vendors column, expense is there, check is there, bill is not there. So we don't get a bill. We don't get pay bills. We don't get purchase orders. We don't get vendor credits. We do get credit card credit. We do get print checks and we do get ad vendor. So really what I'm seeing is that the ledger file is going to work for people who are on a cash basis. It is not going to work for people who are on a cruel basis. It's not going to work for people who need to track their outstanding receivables or who they have sold things to. What we saw earlier was that we don't have the products and services list. That makes sense because you put the products and services on your invoices and your sales receipts to document what you've sold. If you don't have invoices and sales receipts, you don't have a need to list out the things you could put on your invoices and sales receipts. When I look at employees in Craig's design and landscape service, the up arrow indicates that I can upgrade and get that. The up arrow indicates that that's something I can subscribe to for more money. 
but it does include things like these timesheets. These timesheets that you see in Craig's Design and Landscape Service, they're automatically built into QuickBooks Online. This is not the time entry that I chose not to purchase when I was setting up the file. It's a, a different thing. I wish I had a better explanation for that than I do, um, but basically your regular QuickBooks Online files, and let me show you what I mean, these ones, uh, Simple Start Essentials Plus and Advanced, they all have time tracking built in, and then you can pay money to get fancy different time tracking. But the ledger file, ledger file doesn't have any of that built in. So that's good to know. Um, in the ledger file, you can add a contractor. In the regular file, you can add a contractor. Totally fine. On the right hand side, both have bank deposit, both have transfer, both have journal entry. You don't have statement, but statement means generating a list of what your customers owe you. And if you can't track your customers, then you don't need to track what they owe you. There isn't an option for inventory adjustment. So we know that within the ledger file, you do not have inventory. There's pay down credit cards, but then there's no ad product or service. As we've discussed, that just doesn't exist in the ledger file. Let's take a look at the reports. So I'm going to go to reports. I'll go to reports over here. So what I find to be slightly hilarious is that I can run an accounts receivable report in the ledger file. That's funny to me because I can't create an invoice to go on the accounts receivable report. So I'm like, all right, well, cool. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with that, but I'm glad it's there. In both cases, I have a balance sheet, so that makes sense. We'll just look at business overview. These reports are long. I'm not going to go through them all. I think we'd both get really bored. When I look at the regular QuickBooks file, I have balance sheet detail. Um, balance sheet summary. Um, there isn't a balance sheet summary in the ledger file. I don't know if that's a feature of QuickBooks Online Plus or if it's something that I just haven't really thought about. Craig's Design and Landscape Service is QuickBooks Online Plus. One of the differences you'll find is what you can find on reports. So there's no business snapshot. Um, profit and loss stuff seems the same year to date. You can do a profit and loss by customer, even though you can enter no customers. So um, this is the Ledger product is a brand new product. Um, I expect to see some of this stuff changing as um, as Intuit kind of gets to know and figures out what they're doing with it. In the um, in the right hand Craig's landscaping, the sample file, there's a section for who owes you. Obviously, not a, none of that in the Ledger file because the ledger file doesn't have any at customers, accounts receivable, all that. So I'm going to collapse it. Sales and customer doesn't exist. What you owe doesn't exist because you're not tracking that. You cannot track it in the ledger file. So now when I look at expenses and vendors in both cases, I have a 1099 report for both. I have a check detail for both. Expenses by vendor summary for both. Um, transaction list by vendor. I have that for both. And a vendor contact list I have for both. What I don't have is the purchase orders. That kind of makes sense because you would typically do a purchase order um, with your products and services. You certainly can do it without, but you know, most of the time with. So scooting down, there is no sales tax. You're not tracking sales tax in your ledger file, or at least you're not tracking it by customer and by invoice because invoices don't exist. So it makes sense why we don't have that. When we look at employees, we have the employee contact list in both, but we don't have the time detail. Again, that's this up here under employees and these time entries. That's not the upgraded purchase of whatever the time product is called now. Um, go down to the for my accountant. So um, account list, yes. Uh, the ledger file has an adjusted trial balance, but the QuickBooks sample file doesn't have that. Um, I think it's kind of funny. Really, the trial balance you can toggle for adjusted, so it's not like it isn't there. It's just not listed. Um, adjusting journal entries. I think it's nice that you have that at, it, at your fingertips. Balance sheet comparison, balance sheet, general ledger, 
journals, profit and loss comparison, profit and loss by tag, profit and loss, um, recent transactions. So recent automatic transactions don't show up in the ledger file, which makes me wonder if we have automatic transactions. If I go to the gear, and I've got recurring. Recurring transactions are where the automatic ones will live. So a handful of differences, and then we get down to payroll. So let's take a look at the gear and just see what's different from both of those. So when we look at the gear, we have account and settings, we have users. Custom form styles does not exist in the ledger, but that makes sense because you're not styling using an invoice because you have no invoice. Chart of accounts, additional info, products and services we've identified we don't have. Recurring, no problem. Attachments, no problem. Custom fields are custom on invoices. Makes sense why we don't have them. The tools appear to be the same. The profile is basically the same. The difference is that I have switch company because it's my accountant login and I can switch companies. So right now I'm looking at the ledger file. I could go to my own QuickBooks file or I could go to something else. So the fact that that doesn't exist isn't a difference. It's more just how I've signed into the account. So that's it. If you're considering QuickBooks Ledger, your accountant needs to sign up for it. It's going to be different than the existing products on the retail um, QuickBooks Online page. So you're going to have income and expenses, definitely. QuickBooks Ledger will not include invoices and payments. In both cases, you can track your tax deductions. In both cases, you have reports. I think you have receipt capture in both, but let me double check. All right, so I'm back into the ledger file. Let's go to transactions, bake transactions. No, you do not have the option for receipts. Usually I'm going to see receipts across the top. Um, but, but to be clear, that is not to say that you cannot just attach your receipts. You can always attach them here. Let me flip back over to the sample file so that if you don't know what I mean, I can show you. So now I'm back in the sample file and if I go to the transactions and then down to receipts, you're going to see there's this whole menu for receipts. This is what I meant when I said receipts are not available in Ledger. So in both cases, you have the ability to attach things to your individual transactions with the attachments in the lower left hand corner. But with your regular QuickBooks Online, you have this option for receipts. You won't find a video on my YouTube page about receipts because I don't really care for it. Um, I have had people tell me that it's the best ever and they love it. And I've invited them to come on Zoom and demonstrate it and we'll throw it up on YouTube. So far, nobody's really wanted to and that's fine. I would much rather create videos about things I love and things that I want people to learn and understand as opposed to being a negative Nelly. So no videos on this. Okay, so no receipt capture for QuickBooks Ledger, no mileage tracking for QuickBooks Ledger. Um, I don't know about cash flow, so I'll look in a second. No sales tax, um, no estimates, yes contractors, and no sales channels. So sales channels are things, um, let me see if this even shows anything. Um, here we go. Sales channels are Amazon, Shopify, eBay, a connection between QuickBooks and your, your sales channel. So you, you, in both cases, you can connect the bank account, but you can't connect the magical sales channels. The only open question I have for myself is just whether or not you can track your cash flow. And I'm, I'm going to guess no, but let me double check. Okay, so back to the ledger file. Let's just take a look. Um, reports. Can I? Oh, well, this is big. I don't have a report search box. Um, I always go to the upper right hand corner around where my mouse is and I just search for the report I have in mind. I can't do it. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> um, I do have the option for the statement of cash flows here. Um, that's it. When I search the word cash, that's my only option. Let me go back to the regular QuickBooks and see what we have for options there. So I'm, I'm back in the sample file. I've got my search box, which I greatly appreciate. If I search the word cash, I have the statement of cash flows, which is the same, but I know there's another uh, cash flow or cash projection report that I've seen in people's files. I've looked through here and I don't see it. 
So I want to go back to the seals page and just see what it is that it's talking about. What am I remembering? Because I know I'm remembering something. Okay, so I'm on the sales page. As I scroll down for a simple start, it says cash flow. And so I'm just going to click on the see more. Managing cash flow, forecasting money in and money out up to 90 days. That's not the statement of cash flows. That's different. Seal your balances on one dashboard. And now, now comes the answer. Open a QuickBooks checking account to use um, instant deposits, whatever. I think the only time I ever see this cash flow projection thing is when I'm working with a client who opened up a QuickBooks checking account. My hesitation is only because I get annoyed that not everybody knows they've opened a QuickBooks checking account. Um, it's not a different account on your chart of accounts. It's like straight up a whole new bank account. So um, that's why I see it sometimes and not always. That's why we don't see it in the sample file. The sample file doesn't have another checking account. But there we have it. I hope this video has been helpful. The purpose behind creating this video is to introduce QuickBooks Ledger and then talk through the differences between QuickBooks Ledger and a different product such as Simple Start. Because the product is so new, um, Megan and I don't know yet how we're going to use QuickBooks Ledger. I'm excited that it's available. I'm excited to take a look at it. Um, it is something that will keep our eyes open for situations where it makes sense, but I don't know when it's going to make sense or who it'll make sense for. I'm curious about a thing, and you might be as well, so I changed over to a different QuickBooks file. Um, this is for a course that I'm creating, but I just wondered, what if this make-believe client didn't need the full version of QuickBooks? What if they wanted to downgrade? So if you have the same thought, let's look at it together. Um, I set up this QuickBooks file, I don't know, maybe a month ago. Um, crap, I have to log into a different thing. I'm paying for it on my wholesale billing. So it's like, oh, you can't really look at the billing history. So now I'm back to my QuickBooks Online account. account. Um, I specifically have filtered it so that it doesn't show my clients. Over to the right, I'm going to click on the gear. I'm going to go to subscriptions and billing. This is going to be my firm subscriptions, not my I'm the client and I'm wondering about my subscriptions. So I've got the um, the flower shop. That's the one I was talking about a moment ago. And here I have QuickBooks Ledger. That's the one I set up a video ago. So let's imagine that the Flowerworks client wanted to downgrade. So if we go downgrade right now, it's set up as plus. When I look through the list of plans that I can change to, there isn't an option to downgrade to QuickBooks Ledger. Thank you so much for hanging out with me as I've gone through these different softwares. My hope is not to promote one is better and one is worse, but rather to provide information and show you the differences and, and help you identify what this is all about. I'm actually going to start using QuickBooks Ledger for a few things. Once I've gotten a good handle on it, I'm able to demonstrate something more than what I could do with just any other QuickBooks, then I'll make new videos for it. But as of right now, I can't see any real value in creating videos specifically for how to use it because the use case isn't any different than anything else. There's just a bunch of features that do not exist. If you have any questions, if you would like to see videos on anything, please leave them in the comments below. If you want to reach me, I'm available for one-on-one -on -one training at gentlefrog.com. If you need help with your bookkeeping, Megan and I are available at gentlefrog.com. Thank you so much.